Lung Transplant Process. The purpose of this video is to give you information about the process of having a lung transplant. Transplantation is a team effort. We are your team and you are the most important member. It is important that you share all of this information with your family and others supporting you in this journey. You must have a dedicated support person to accompany you throughout the entire process of having a lung transplant. This video will help you to understand the process of having a transplant and the significant changes that are required to your lifestyle. The Transplant Assessment Process Your lung transplant journey starts with a referral from your respirologist. If the referral is accepted, you will meet with a lung transplant respirologist. At this appointment, you will learn if lung transplant might be a good treatment option for you. After this appointment, the lung transplant respirologist will ask the team to plan a transplant assessment. This process helps to determine if transplantation is the right treatment for you and ensures that it is as safe as possible for you to have a transplant. The assessment process will involve coming to the hospital to have a number of tests and meeting with key members of your team. Having a lung transplant is a big decision. You need to understand the benefits, the risks, and our program requirements. The assessment process will give you and our team the information to make an informed decision about having a lung transplant. Once your assessment is complete, the transplant team will meet to review your results. This assessment process can take up to eight weeks. Your transplant coordinator will call you to discuss the results of your assessment. If a transplant is recommended, the choice to proceed is up to you. We will support you whether you go forward with a transplant or not. Waiting on our list. If you decide to have a lung transplant, you will meet with a lung transplant surgeon and your transplant coordinator to discuss surgery and to sign surgical consent forms. At this point, you are officially placed on the lung transplant waiting list. The time that you wait for your lung transplant is unpredictable because you have to be matched to a suitable donor. Our surgeons use several factors to match donors with patients on the waiting list. Two of the most important factors are blood type and lung size. Because of this, there is no top spot on the waiting list. While you are waiting for your lung transplant, there are three main goals. First, maintain your health and improve your strength. Our physiotherapy program will help you achieve this goal. The physiotherapists will also work with the doctors to ensure your oxygen needs are met. Second, identify and manage any new and existing problems that may arise. We will partner with your local healthcare team to manage your health. You and your support person will attend frequent appointments at our hospital. Third, continuing to learn about life with a lung transplant through our support and education groups and by speaking to your transplant team. The team includes doctors, pharmacists, dietitians, speech language pathologists, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, nurses, and social workers. Your surgery. Immediately before transplant, we will do a few last-minute tests and you will receive anti-rejection medications and antibiotics. There is a chance that the surgery will be cancelled at the last moment as the team is assessing the donor lungs right up to the moments before the surgery. In the operating room, you will be given medication to keep you unconscious. Several tubes are inserted into your body, including an endotracheal tube which is a breathing tube that extends from your mouth into the lungs, an intravenous line in your neck, a nasogastric or NG tube that goes into your stomach through your nose, and a urinary catheter that drains urine freely into a bag. The surgery itself can take six or more hours depending on your condition and whether you have a double or a single lung transplant. Some people need to have their lung or heart function supported by machines before, during, 
or after the surgery. Your chest will be opened between the ribs, in the front across the breastbone, or at the side. The diseased lungs will be removed and replaced with the donor lungs, one at a time. The new lung will be connected to the main bronchus, the pulmonary artery, and the pulmonary vein. After the lung is connected, the surgeons will leave drainage tubes around the lungs and heart and carefully close the layers of bone, muscle, and skin. After the surgery, you will be taken to the Intensive Care Unit, or ICU. You will remain there until you can breathe without the help of the ventilator or breathing machine, and until your condition is stable. In the ICU, you will be on a monitor that shows your heart rate, blood pressure, and other vital signs to the team at all times. The endotracheal, or breathing tube, intravenous, chest tubes, nasogastric tube, and urinary catheter will be removed as your condition improves. If you still require the ventilator to breathe after about a week, you may need to have a temporary tracheostomy tube inserted through your neck into your trachea. The tracheostomy will make you feel more comfortable and help you to get strong enough to breathe without the ventilator and will make it easier to clear mucus from your lungs. The staff will be able to suction mucus from your lungs through the endotracheal or tracheostomy tubes. While on the ventilator, you will not be able to talk, but if you are awake enough, you will be able to communicate by mouthing words, writing, or using other devices. Once you are well enough to leave the ICU, you will be moved to the Acute Care Unit, or ACU, and then to the Regular Care Unit. Most people stay in hospital for about 10 days to a few weeks after receiving a lung transplant, while others may have a longer stay. You will be given anti-rejection and anti-infection medications to ensure that your lungs work well. You will also receive medications for other conditions that you might have, such as pain. Pain should improve over time and pain control is a priority because you must participate in physiotherapy after the transplant to gain strength and avoid other complications. You will be sitting in the chair and walking as soon as possible after the surgery with the help of the physiotherapists and nurses. The team will help to get you home or to a rehabilitation hospital as soon as it is safe. After discharge from the hospital. As you recover from your transplant, we will help you to learn how to monitor your own health and to understand complications that may occur. After transplant, you will have weekly clinic visits at the ambulatory transplant clinic for the first few months and then less frequent visits over time. It is mandatory that your support person attends all your clinic visits. Before each clinic visit, you must have blood work, a chest x-ray, and a pulmonary function test, bronchoscopies, and CT scans of the chest will also be done at longer intervals. You will participate in an exercise program three times a week for the first three months after your discharge. The physiotherapy team will monitor your physical progress and develop an exercise program with you. Ongoing exercise is recommended after completion of your supervised program. Rejection and Infection Two of the most common complications following transplant are rejection of the lung and infections. Rejection is common and can happen any time after your transplant. Rejection happens because your immune system attacks your transplanted lungs. Your immune system sees your new lungs as invading cells and can damage them. To prevent this, you will take anti-rejection medications, also called immunosuppression medications. You will need to take these medications every day for the rest of your life to protect your new lungs. Despite taking anti-rejection medications, rejection can still occur. 
it is often reversible as long as it is detected and treated quickly. If rejection is detected, your treatment plan may include additional medications, adjusting your current medications, and other treatments. Unfortunately, immunosuppressive medications also decrease the body's ability to fight infection, and infections of the lungs are very common. Your weekly clinic visits will allow the transplant team to monitor for rejection and infection. You will also need to perform home spirometry readings once daily and keep a record of your readings. Learn the signs and symptoms of rejections and infections and report any unusual symptoms to your transplant team right away. The transplant program will continue to monitor your health and will work closely with you and your support person, your family doctor, and your respirologist for the rest of your life. Your family doctor will continue to help you to maintain your general health and well-being. You will be assigned a transplant nurse coordinator and physician who you and your care providers can communicate with. Your team is there to help you, but it is important that you play an active role in maintaining your health and keep them informed about changes.